Okay. So guys, now um, we're gonna do a very mini task, yeah, a very small task before we um, get into the uh, lecture. All right. Now I'm gonna upload a video. Okay. Watch this video. Okay. You don't have to design anything. Think. A possible survey you could you could do related to the post your topic. Okay. Before I start the lecture, I would like you to in this. Okay, so that's the video. Watch the video. Okay. I want you to think of possible survey, possible, you know, um, yeah, survey that we could do based on this video. Okay, so post, okay. giving you time until 15 to do this.
guys, if you look at it, um, some of you, some of you said, uh, is it difficult to assemble their furniture? You know, it, it, there is a skill. I think it's part of computational uh, thinking skill as well, where, you know, uh, I always tell to people, I said, I, you know, I understand English. I even teach English. Unfortunately, I cannot understand the instructions given to assemble things. It's just that, you know, that, that computational thinking part is a bit limited, I feel like for me. I just cannot see manual and assemble things. Furniture, forget about electronical items. So uh, I was never one of those like, I don't know, maybe didn't do much blocks. Like now kids, you see, they all are just doing blocks. They get manual and then they just fix it. And then they get some kind of all these automated stuff, you know. Um, uh, what do you call non-mechanical cars where they can just fix everything, assemble, and then it just moves on green energy. So if you are exposed to things like this since you're young, you will have different kind of uh, exposure. Your your thinking, critical thinking, will be you know will be a bit heightened. So yeah, talking about assembling furniture and so on. Okay. But he says we could um, perhaps do a questionnaire on reusable material. Okay, that makes sense. People knowledge, people's knowledge about recycling. Okay, survey on affordability of furniture based on underprivileged groups. Mm, okay, makes sense. What's the core message in the video? Guys, what's the core message? Anybody? Saving the environment, yes. So anything along that line, saving the environment or um, recycling, yeah, it makes sense. Create something that is better for human. Okay. Recycling especially. Right? A lot of encouragement on recycling is that instead of us, you know, creating new things, we can reuse, we can recycle, you know. So that message is quite clear here. All right. So now let's, uh, are you ready for the lecture? Ready? Yes, no. Can I get a thumbs up? No thumbs up, no lecture. Good news, is it? Guys, good morning. Okay. All right, so I'll start the lecture just to let you all know. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, just to let you all know. Um, thank you so much, Samuel and the rest of you. Some of the slides I'll be skipping because it may not be very relevant because we're going to use Google Form. Okay, certain slides are more towards paper based questionnaire. So elements related to that I will omit and then whatever relevant to the assignment and what you need is what will be presented. Okay, so here you go. Okay, so what do we mean by survey? Okay, what is the definition of survey or survey design? Okay. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at data collection method, uh, advantages and disadvantages of different data collection methods. We will look at different types of questions, right? And what is a survey? A survey is basically a selection of sample of respondents before administering questionnaire or conducting interviews to collect information. OK, so let's say now you're doing a survey about IKEA. All right, you want to know, uh, let's say you want to talk about people's awareness on recycling, for example. OK, you want to find out to what extent people are familiar with recycling. OK, so 
who is your sample respondents? is your sample respondent Sorry. who is your sample respondent want to do a survey about about um, recycling for example yeah you want to know okay aim of the survey is awareness So how would you do it? Who is your sample respondent? Any idea? Who will be the participants of your survey? AP1 means, I think AP1. Very good. So the participants will be the consumers, isn't it? Consumers, right? You may have a specific, why APU students? APU students know because the topic is about very general. It's about awareness on, awareness on uh, recycling. So it's a very broad topic, all right? So like what Tina said, it's the public, but how do you limit, mm -hmm. okay? How do you limit your sample? I mean, how do you define your sample? Any idea? Now you say public. Public is so broad, isn't it? So how do we de define it? OK, so when we say sample, OK, fine, public. What are they going to do? They're going to answer questionnaire. What are you going to do? What, what is the aim? You want to collect information about people's perhaps opinion. OK, or perhaps people's idea about or people of maybe perhaps how they feel. OK, how they feel about recycling. So basically, survey is an attempt to get information from a group of people. OK, moving on. So uh, why do we do a survey? Because we want to know what is people's belief at that moment. What is people's belief at that point of time? OK, when the questionnaire is distributed or the interview is done. So questionnaire, listen very carefully. There are many ways to conduct a survey. Questionnaire is not the only way. You could also do an interview. So questionnaire interviews, these are all tools to collect data. So these are data collection tools, OK? And why is it a known population? A known population means it's not that you know that person. Okay, this is Ali, this is Abu, this is Achong, this is Amy. No, that's not known population. It's not about knowing them personally. It's about knowing that entire group. For example, okay, these are students. These are Malaysians. These are coffee lovers. These are vegeta vegetarians. These are vegans. So when you say vegetarians, vegans, coffee lovers, students, employees, unemployed people. So when you categorize people like that, that in that context, it is known as known popu population. OK, moving on. So why do people do survey? They want to know about the reason of a particular activity. You want to know about people's character. OK, so what are the data collection methods? There are many ways. OK, one of it is survey. Questionnaire, the first one here is questionnaire. Have you heard of postal survey? Have you have you received any letter where people want you to do some survey? Anyone? Anybody? Anyone? I didn't hear about postal survey, but I, I heard about internet survey. Internet survey. Yeah. OK. All right. So we have internet survey. So anyone has received any letters as for survey purpose? You know, those days, I still remember when I was a child, uh, we used to get a lot of letters and those were questionnaires, you know. So you're supposed to fill it out and then you're supposed to go to the uh, nearest post box. You drop it in the post box. Do you know where's the nearest post box nowadays? Do you write letters? Those were the days, right? People used to write letters, correspond through. We still have letters, but usually these are bank letters, 
some someone notice you gate for some you know wrong doings on the road right so these are the letters we get today so uzma said no yishun said no so notice when we get letter we, we get worried is it from the police is it from the court is it from the bank you know so nowadays this is you know this is the purpose of letters today all right coming back to survey okay so now what kind of survey is very popular guys For now, I think it's like online class is good or not. <laughs> survey. Internet survey. Yeah. Internet survey is very, very popular nowadays. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on. All right okay so like what um okay let's look at this okay so what are the advantages you know what is a group like the assignment that you're going to do okay the group assignment that's a group administration questionnaire because you're going to get many respondents okay so what are the good things about questionnaire you can get many respondents in a very short period of time okay uh we don't have test administrators okay because you're going to do online survey. Test administrators is only if you have, uh, if you're doing a survey in your, uh, you know, physical, like, you know, you distribute the paper and then you put your participants in front of you and then you do a survey that is uh, only then in that situation, maybe you have a test administrator, otherwise you don't, okay? It's very cheap, it's very easy and Respondents can be reached across long distances, especially nowadays, because all you're going to do is just share you URL or you're just going to give the barcode. They're going to scan and do the questionnaire. So any part of the world, as long as they are connected to the Internet, they should be able to participate in your survey. So these are all the good things, yeah, the easy things. All right. Usually people's response rate is pretty good. It's quite optimal. Uh, optimal. Again, there is no interviewer here. OK. So they cannot ask you questions because it's not a face to face survey. All right. OK, so what are the problems? Uh, if it's done in a face to face context, OK, different administrators can give different explanation. Simple. This really, really happened to us like, you know, how many years ago, 15 years ago, we were doing a survey with a group of um, um, with a group of people. I don't want to name the sample. With a group of people, these are people who who do a lot of work with uh, overseas organizations in different countries. OK, so one of this person called a test. I was one of the test administrators that time. So this didn't happen to me. This happened to another person. Um, this person was called. You know, what was the question asked? This person said, I have difficulties in answering the gender question. I'm neither female nor male. What do I do? And this is 15 years ago. Till today, you know, you still only have two categories, right? OK, um, and this was 15 years ago. Um, the administrator, um, what did she say? She said, leave it blank or just write it there. But you see, this is where the complication comes in, because some people may say leave it blank. Some people may say put tick for both. Some people may say you just specify. So you see, this is what we mean by different administrators can lead to different responses. OK, is that clear? Is that clear? OK, great. Now. Going back to our slides here. So primary researcher is the main researcher. So if you do this kind of survey and you distribute, even your, your group assignment is the same. OK, let's say like group assignment, you only have to send the survey to about 30 participants. OK, 30, 30. But if it involves a big sample, for example, like hundreds or thousands of people, then as the main researcher, you will have very limited control. You wouldn't know what is happening. They cannot check with you. If it's a small group, you can send a text. Hey, have you completed the survey? Uh, was it clear? Was it unclear? Can I help you? But can you imagine you have thousands of participants? Will you be able to do that? You will not. 
Okay, so that's what we mean by primary researcher will have limited control. Okay, the condition in which the questionnaire is administered is not clear. This is another, okay, very simple, guys. Okay, you guys, uh, you do your course evaluation survey, right? All of you. Do you know what is that? Do you know what is that? You know, after the course, you do your survey, like uh, how effective the Moodle was, was the lecturer, uh, was the lecturer's instruction clear? You know, you get this kind of survey and then you'll answer the questions, right? Yes, no, yes, no, and so on. OK, let's say you are very angry. You're not in a good mood. Uh, you have failed that particular module. OK, this is just an example. And then you see that person's name in front of there and you are requested to do the evaluation. How do you think the outcome will be? Can you type it out? How do you think the outcome will be? If you are very upset with someone and you have to do a survey or an evaluation, how will the outcome be? Will it be good? Will it be desirable? Will you be able to be honest? Okay. Very honest, okay, very good. Some of you could do it, that's very good, okay. No, 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 what I'm saying is, let's say you have to do a survey about ARS, for example, okay, and you are very upset with the AR. let's say you're very upset with me, okay, and then now you have to do a survey about my module. Uh, you know, I'm talking about general situation. It, it may not happen to everybody, but naturally being a human, what do we do? We tend to have that, Emotion, if you're going to bring that emotion into the survey, most likely you will not be able to do it honestly. OK, you may be upset, right? So that is what we mean by the condition is not clear or it's not within our control. OK, so that is something that we have to remember. Right? Now, next is telephone survey. No, no, no. I think here. Yeah. Oh yeah, postal survey, we skipped postal survey, sorry. So postal survey is, guys, postal survey, it says cheap, I don't think it's cheap because now with internet, Wi-Fi, and you know, I mean with all this WhatsApp and so on, I think it's practically cheaper because you don't have to buy stamp, you don't have to drive to the post office, okay? You don't have to do all that. So it's very convenient, okay? But of course, you may be paying for your internet. I don't know how much you would pay, but that is used for so many services, right? It's used for several services. Therefore, um, postal survey is considered cheap, yeah? And then respondents, if it's a postal survey, somebody posts a letter to you, okay, now fill out all this form. Uh, you know what is the problem? People may, uh, the good thing is, the good, okay, it's not a problem yet. The good thing is, you can take your own time to reflect, you know, to check some records and all that. Yeah, like checking personal records and then you can respond. OK, and no interviewer may be affecting you as a respondent, meaning nobody's going to influence you because it's just you and the paper. OK, but the problem is people don't really respond to survey, postal survey. And then, uh, like what I said, they may not even complete the questionnaire. You have no control, OK? whether they do the questionnaire or not. And then the questionnaire can be given to somebody else to be done. OK, this one my neighbor used to do whenever they get a survey with kids. So they will ask us to do some questionnaire and stuff, not questionnaire, but simple, you know, responses. And then we just we used to just do it for fun and stuff like that. So that's not so good. Yeah, you don't get accurate data. Telephone survey. How many of you have received telephone phone calls asking you for opinion and so on? Anyone? Telephone survey. Students told me they get calls from APU also. Is that true? Anyone? I think, have I, I think it's mostly is about insurance company. I think so. <laughs> insurance company. Okay. Anyone has anyone has received call from universities? No. Good. 
No. OK, now so when we say um, coming back to our slides here, all right. So telephone survey, it's very quick. Yeah, that's good. Uh, respondent from long distance can be reached. Response rate is pretty high. OK, interviewer can assist with issues that are unclear to the respondent. All right. And respondents don't have to be literate because you are not going to write anything. You're not going to read. You're just going to speak. All right. OK, but the problem is the cost can be high. You cannot ask so many questions if it's over the phone. Only people with telephone can be reached and this still happens. Yeah, even in Malaysia, certain parts of Malaysia, people may not have a telephone. Uh, interviewer, this is where the interviewer is coming in, may influence the responses. OK, now face to face survey. The good thing about face to face survey is it has got very high response rate. People stand right in front of you. They ask you questions. Sometimes out of obligation, you feel like, OK, I'll just do it. You know that kind of a thing. Long questionnaire can be used. Interviewer can um, can assist. If that's, let's say the interviewee has some questions, the interviewer can assist. You don't have to be literate to do this. OK, so these are the good things, but the challenges are it can be expensive. Always remember in interview, the interviewer must be well trained. OK, uh, you may be biased. OK, so that's a risk we have. Right. So far clear about data collection. Was it clear? Yes, ma'am. Now I want you to just watch this. Uh, which one is this? Yeah. Just give me a second. Huh? I'm just going to plot a video. Just give me a second. Hold on, yes. Okay, tell me what type of survey is this? Okay, I'm going to share the screen. What type of survey is this? Okay, I'm sharing. I forgot to enable the audio. Australia. We're in Australia, mate. Brisbane. I'm from Australia. Oh, really? I am. Why are you here then? Uh, I'm filming a video. <laughs> 
Uh, so I'm just joined here on Santa Monica Beach. I'm joined here with... Soleil. Soleil and... Laura. Maggie. And... Taja. Chris. All right, so jumping into this street interview. Today's topic is languages, so we're asking, uh, do you... Can you speak another language? No. You can't, can you? I uh, know. I speak Spanish, a little bit of Italian. English. Spanish and Italian? I wish I did, but no. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, French and English. I do not. I speak English and very, very little Spanish. Did you know that the U.S. and Australia are actually the least bilingual countries in the world? Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't realize, but yeah. yeah. Let's see. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess in schools they should be teaching it more yeah. and pushing it more. Um, next up. So <laughs> if you're on a date with a guy, right? and you find out that he can speak another language, is that an attractive trait? Yes, and they have an accent as well. They need the accent when they're speaking another language. Say, for instance, he's speaking French. <laughs> they need that French accent. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> okay. So that's basically a survey. Agree? Do you agree that that's a survey? Yes, miss. Okay, so what is the main idea here? What is the main topic of this survey? What is the topic here? What, what, what is that the researcher wants, wants to find out? Or, or the, you know, the interviewer wants to find out? No idea? Yep. Yeah, if knowing how to speak another, another language is attractive. Okay, it's about bilingual. Okay, it's about being uh, multilingual. Hold on, yeah. Okay, so it's about being multilingual. Yeah, so like what you have said, Danesh and uh, Fatih and so on. So the question here is, um, is that nice or is that cool rather you know loosely speaking is it like cool to speak more than one language okay if you're in malaysia most likely yes most of us are at least bilingual uh, and majority could be multilingual okay so that's in malaysia okay but but most of the malaysians are bilingual could speak at least two languages Okay, because we have got people from different ethnicity here. All right, so this person is doing a survey on the street about language and perhaps how you get attracted to people or people's ability rather, you know, who could speak more than one language. Okay, so how is that for y'all? You know, the girls and the boys, you get attracted with if, you, if you're on a date, you, do you get attracted if the person you're dating can speak more than one language? Is that an attracting factor? Let's do that quick survey. Is that an attracting factor? Is that an attracting factor? If your partner could. The thing is, when I get a lot of replies, I can't time when you're. Multilingual. Yes, Saad said yes. Guys, respond to my question, please. Any favorite language? Any favorite language you have? Any favorite language? What, what What's your favorite language? Ah, and there are a lot of pop-ups coming up. It's very difficult for me to type. Spanish. Ooh. Arabic. French. Yeah. French people say it's a very sexy language. A very romantic language. 
Russian. Ooh. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so now you see instantly, okay, uh, Yichuan, Mandarin, Hokkien, Hakka, those are languages, or any varieties in Chinese will do, okay? Now, guys, so instantly, you also were a participant in a survey. You became a participant in a survey because somebody posted a question, I posted a question, and you started answering. So when you, you know, when you reply to questions like this, instantly, you become my respondent to my survey. All right. And if you look at the response rate, it's not too bad because uh, I know there are so many of you, but not many responded. But if I were to write a letter, send it to your house, waiting for you to reply, I will never get a single reply. OK, so the fastest mode is perhaps this. All right. OK, so is it clear about what is the way, how it can be done, who are respondents and all that? Is that clear? OK, great. OK, next we will look at principles of designing a questionnaire. OK, we will look at principles of designing questionnaire. So before we get into that, let's take a five minute break.
right? Okay, so let's look at uh, question and designing. All right. So if you look at question and designing guys, okay? So these are the aspects, okay? Some aspects not relevant because we're gonna do it on Google Form, all right? Okay, appearance, don't worry. In a click of button, Google Form will give you a beautiful interface, okay? Sequence of question, you have to be careful because you have to arrange the questions accordingly. So remember, remember these, remember these. The first part of the question is demographic profile okay the first part is demographic profile the second part is where your questionnaire your questions your statements will start is that clear and i'll show you a sample later okay wording of questions use very simple language simple words words that are very straightforward otherwise the participants will be very confused okay and then response categories are basically you know your scale Okay, use the right scale, all right? And uh, it has to be simple. Instructions must be simple, must be very clear. But you don't have to worry about instructions because the Google form, the interface is such that you don't have to tell people what to do. When they look at it, they know they have to press the buttons and they'll get it done. But if you're doing a manual survey, you have got to type the instructions. If it's not manual, then don't have to worry. So don't worry much about instructions. All right, OK, appearance of questionnaire. It has to be user friendly. If you're typing it, you're printing it here. You are not need printing not required. OK, OK, use the right font. OK, now when you're doing this kind of survey, the one uh, like Google, they have done extensive research about all this. Only then they will launch their product. So when you come across an interface to design a survey, usually or not usually it's always that the font type which they have selected the font uh, size which have they selected they are pretty good you could just take it right away you don't have to enlarge alter change unless you have got a specific you know a design you want to add or it has got a specific function which is you know out of norm only then alteration is required because they would have done enough study. You know, when you're doing your survey and all, you can't use all kinds of font. Even like newspaper, when you're typing, when you're doing your blogging, you can't just use random font type. There are certain types of font which you could use for newspapers, newsletters, emails, certain type of font for invitation cards. So this kind of uh, research they have done and that's why they have, you know, based on the findings, they would have, you know, they would have created their entire platform. So you don't have to worry about choosing the right font and all that. Just go ahead with what they have. Okay. Instructions was. Uh, <coughs> Instructions must be clear. Quality of paper, don't worry because no printing. Okay. Now, students always ask, Miss, how long should the questionnaire be? OK, theoretically, listen carefully, theoretically 20 minutes. Listen, theoretically 20 minutes for learners, adults 30 minutes, 100 to 120 questions. But for our assignment, you can't be doing a questionnaire for 20 minutes. People are not keen. 
you can't do 120 questions. All we need from you is 30 questions, including demographic profile. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, no. OK, all we need is just 30 questions because people will not students will not respond to your questions. The wise, OK, your 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 response rate will be poor. So have a very brief introduction. OK. Uh, easy to difficult question. OK, use simple language. Don't use slangs and jargons like uh, what is the reliability? What is the validity? Uh, what is the sample population? Your participants will not understand all this because they didn't do ARS like you. OK, don't ask ambiguous questions. For example, uh, do you live in KL or do you live in Malaysia? Does it make sense? Do you live in KL or Malaysia? Is it a yes, no question? Do you say yes or do you say no? How if I'm living in KL but I'm not living in Malaysia? Can I say no? Can I say yes? All right, so avoid questions like this. Do not ask double barrel questions. Do not ask leading questions. Avoid don't ask knowledge questions. Tell me the smallest country in the world. And then what is your preference about counterfeit product? Which country do you belong to? It doesn't work that way. OK, don't ask memory questions. If I ask you what you had for breakfast three days ago, can you tell me? You can't. So don't ask hypothetical questions like what do you think about life? How will life be if it's online forever? You know, these are all very hypothetical questions. Don't ask if they're not relevant. OK, it's because survey is something that you really need precise answers so that you can analyze and report. All right, question wording, do not ask double. OK, going back to double barrel. I don't think I explained what is double barrel. Double barrel questions are very simple. Like, like, do you live in Kuala Lumpur or Malaysia? I mean, do you say yes or no? This is a double barrel question. OK, all people like to ask questions. If you were to be an engineer, would you like to work for your? Would you like, would you prefer to be self-employed? Number one. If you're an engineer, how if I'm not an engineer? OK, so this kind of questions can be double, double barrel. Like, you know, if you go to school, would you like to drive or walk? First and foremost, I don't even want to go to school. So these are double barrel question. You have got two elements in one statement. Avoid that because your respondents cannot say yes or no. OK. So don't ask double negative questions. What does it mean to be not unsuccessful? Not unsuccessful. So, you know, too much of that negative, uh, you know, prefixes there. Avoid. Use your statements, okay? Construct your statements in first person. Like, use the pronoun you. Would you prefer walking to school? Or would you prefer studying from home? Would you prefer going for physical classes? So when you use words like you, your questionnaire becomes personalized. OK, it makes a lot of difference when the reader is reading. And remember, it doesn't mean this is a questionnaire. You ask WH questions throughout. No, OK, you could ask like statements. This is the practice we're going to do in tutorial. Later, I have got a tutorial with one of the groups, T14, I think. And the whole of next week also, if you have a tutorial, you'll be doing, you will have tutorial. If it's typhusan, no, all right. So um, yeah, so you'll be practicing on how to design questionnaire. Don't assume, like what I told you, if you're an engineer, how if I'm not an engineer? Okay, for all questions like, where would you like to park your car in APU? Uh, would you like to park your car in APU or out of APU? How if I'm not driving? OK, so you cannot make this kind of assumptions. Don't ask sensitive questions. All right, so I don't want to give examples. OK, don't ask sensitive questions. OK, open ended questions are very good, but remember no open ended question for your class test. Uh, I mean for your group assignment. What sort of a class is this? Everything is a no, 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 no. 
OK, OK, guys, actually combination of open ended and close ended. It's a good combination. That's how ideally a survey should be. Unfortunately, because of time constraint, we are removing open ended because it's very difficult to analyze open ended. Is that clear? OK, so these are just some examples of open ended questions. OK. The good thing is people can give honest answer. It reflects a lot on thinking process. You know, uh, complex questions can be answered adequately because they can explain. All right, but the problem is too much of details for you to analyze. Very difficult to code the answers and it takes a lot of time for the respondents also to reflect and so on. OK, illiterate people cannot attempt. Statistical analysis is difficult because they're going to write. How do you analyze writing? Uh, you know, all these sentences, paragraphs, it's difficult. OK. Now, when we talk about closed questions, OK, closed questions are good, like what we're going to do for our survey now. Th those are closed questions. One second. Those are closed questions because they're just going to put a tick. OK, they're just going to put a tick. And it's easy because you could, you know, just put a scale like this. So this is a list. You don't have to worry about this because Google Form has got their own um, way. They have got their own style for responses. So they do have list. They have like this. OK, this kind of questions where you can put it as multiple choice if you want. They have this yes, no. Also, Google Drive has a uh, Google Form has it. OK, yes, no. All right. So these are follow up questions avoid. Follow up questions are like this. Okay. I don't have an example. So yeah, this is a follow up question. So whenever there's a follow up question, you must have a filter question also. What type of recommendation do you have while studying? Do you think, okay, for example, this one. Do you think there's a need for providing guidance to expectant fathers? So that's a follow up question. After a follow up question, you should have a filter question like this. OK, so that's a filter question. Sorry, sorry, that's a filter and this is a follow up. Sorry, I got it mixed up. So. then, Yeah, what type of information should be provided? So the next stage, but these kind of questions please avoid because you you only have 30 questions to construct. OK, so you cannot afford to do this. All right, you won't have enough data to analyze them. Then, then yeah. OK, so these are examples, but you don't have to worry about all this because uh, you know, like what I said, you're not manually designing your questionnaire. OK, so there is another kind, another type of scale. It's called ranking questions. Ranking questions, you can do this. If you want to know people's preferences, you know, which is most preferred, least preferred, you can do this. OK, this is very popular uh, ranking category questions, quantity questions. OK, so in category question, you just choose a particular category. Quantity means you ask them to type the number. How old are you? How many family members are there in your house? You know, in your family, you know? So what was your score in the last term, for example? All right, so these are quantity questions. Scale, there are two types of scale that uh, we would like to introduce. Number one is Likert scale. Likert scale is very popular. And the second one is semantic differential scale. I'll give you an example. Like a scale, you know this strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree. So if you have this, this is called like a scale. So if it's strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree and strongly disagree, this is a five point like a scale because you've got five elements there. Is it clear? Okay. Differential scale is like this. OK, I give you a minute for you to take a look at this. So in semantic difference, differential scale, they use adjectives like this. Is this clear? Okay. Any questions, guys?
Any questions? Okay, if you have no questions, I'm going to brief you on your assignment. Okay. Okay, briefing. Briefing time, 11.15, okay? So please be ready. I'll get uh, Miss, uh, most likely Miss uh, Iman will be joining. So let me just extend the invitation to her. So I'll see you again at 11.15 for the assignment briefing. Is that okay? I'm going to step out for a while. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll see you about 11.15. Okay, just give me about if there's a slight delay, just hold on.
Okay, I'm back. One second, I'm trying to access something. So have you all formed your uh, groups for your assignment? No, have you formed your group for assignment? Yes, no. Yes, Miss Fidri. Yes. Yeah, our tutorial we done. We are done. Uh, what about Miss uh, Iman's tutorial? Is it done? Have you formed your groups? Okay, individual assignment. I just want to check. Anybody from Miss Iman's class submitted to my group? Anyone made that mistake? Anybody from Miss Iman's class accidentally submitted to me? Anyone? Because you are supposed to submit to Miss Iman, you know, not to me. Oh my God. Okay, if you all have submitted to Miss Iman, then. Okay, students from my tutorial, I'll have to give you a separate set of instructions then. Okay, so for group assignment, two different folders, yeah, not the same folder. Okay. All right, let me wait. Uh, Miss Iman will be joining. One second. Okay. Okay, Miss Iman is here. Okay, guys, so I'll start the briefing. Yeah, I'll start the briefing on uh on our assignment. Okay. So do you know what you have to do, guys, for your group assignment? Yes, no? Hello, what was the lecture today all about? Construct a questionnaire, very good. Thank you, Uzma, thank you so much. Okay, let's take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let me share the screen of the assignment question. Here you go. Okay, so we're done with the individual assignment. Okay, this is done. Okay, guys, so we are here. Class tests will be conducted in the final week. All right. Okay, let's zoom into the group assignment. So if you look at the group assignment, it says your deadline is 11th of March. Okay, now listen very carefully. 11th of March because uh, not because 11. What do you do on 11th of March is you have to submit the hard, the, the, the soft copies of your work. OK, presentation will start right after that in week 14. OK, number one. Number two, since it's a group assignment, you don't have to submit. Not all of you submitting the assignment. The group wrap alone. One person from the group will be submitting the assignment. Is that clear? Yes, no? Yes, miss. 
Okay, great. Now, so it's a group of, you know, it's a group assignment, so five to six members. I believe you have formed your groups. By now, you should have your groups. If you have not, please start forming your group. If you don't have a group, inform your lecturers this week. Latest by next, what, Monday? Send a message on Teams. Otherwise, we cannot fix the problem and you will not get your marks for your group assignment. Okay? So what you have to do for your group assignment is a questionnaire. You use Google Forms to do the questionnaire. Okay? Now, the first part of the form, you should do your demographic profile. And then the second half of the form, there are only two parts. The second part, you create your variables. Okay? Variables. And then you conduct a mini survey. You send the link to your classmates and they will, you know, respond to the questionnaire. So now your questionnaire, you cannot give to your own group members, tutorial group, but you can give it to students from other tutorial group. That's fine. Anyone from APU, students from APU, that is fine. Is that clear? Yes, no? Clear? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Okay. And then that's for, that's for submission, that's for your questionnaire. Guideline for presentation. All of you must be presenting. Each and every participant is a presenter. Each and every student in the class is a presenter. If you fail to present, you will not get your marks for your presentation, which is 30%. Okay, but let's say there are five group members and one of you is absent. The rest of the four students will not be uh, affected with that one student's absence. Okay. So please remember marks. We are not giving marks for the whole group like a blanket rule, you know, like a holistic marking. No, you avoid you. You'll be given marks based on your individual performance for your presentation. This is the format. OK, your slide must be divided into two parts. OK, the left part is the graphic. The right part is the analysis. I'll show you a sample. All right. OK, and this is the assessment criteria. So far, is it OK? You understand? Any questions? Is it OK? So far, is it OK? Yes, miss. OK, now I show you a sample, OK? This is how your submissions will be. OK, you have to submit your progress log sheet. Put everybody's name and here. Who did what? Number one. Your slides. Let me show you the slides, yeah? This is just a guideline, okay? I'm not saying this is a, I, I don't know what's the grade of this group, okay? What's their score? I'm not too sure. This is just on the submission. Okay. Hold on, let me just share the screen of the slides here. OK, so their topic was awareness of COVID. OK, this was their topic. So all of you guys, you must have your group members names like this on the first slide itself. That's compulsory. And then before you present, before each presenter presents, you must have your name and your TP number before you start presenting. So this is like a page divider. So this is a slide divider. Before you present, your name and your TP should appear like this, and then you start your presentation. OK, the first presenter will only present introduction. Again, I'm not saying this is a distinction work. I'm just explaining the flow. Literature review should be presented like this in a table. On the left, references. On the right, the summary, the content or the analysis. Methodology. Okay. And then that's it. That's the role of the first presenter. Okay. If you look at it, the first presenter did not explain anything about the survey, the variable, nothing. Second presenter on words. You must choose a variable and you must present you must include three statements. Statement one, you must type the question like this. This is the graphic. This graphic will be generated by Google Drive. 
okay? And this is your analysis. So you have to do three slides like this. One, two, three. And then next presenter. Same. Next presenter, statement, graphic, analysis. One, two, three. And then next presenter. Is this clear? Outside APU, no, because the survey is going to be about APU students. Okay. Alalam. Okay, now. Okay. Questionnaire. Let me just share the questionnaire with y'all. Okay, on Google uh, form, the questionnaire will be definitely more attractive. Because this particular questionnaire, this one, they have downloaded. Okay. When you download, it has to be in PDF format like these guys. Remember, this is what you submit to us. So this is the title. Remember, just now in the lecture, I said you must have an, your, your aim must be clear. Aim of the questionnaire. This is the aim. You could put all questions as required questions so that you get a maximum output from the respondents. This is what we mean by demographic profile. So demography is basically age, you know, these are examples, yeah, age, gender, okay, they have prefer not to say, education level. So this, that's it, country, marital status, and that's it. Income, so income is something relevant to this assignment, to the topic they were doing, number of family. So these are the things they included in their demographic profile. If income is not relevant to your topic, you don't have to. Education level is not relevant, you don't have to. So that's the first part. So demographic profile, basically three to five will do enough. And then you go to the variable. So one presenter, one variable. So this is knowledge toward COVID. Okay, so you see the scale. Just now we did this, right? Like a scale, drop down scale and all that. So this is how it works. This is the statement. And then you should have about six statements, six statements. Then you go to the next variable, attitude, next variable. Okay, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then practice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. And it goes on. So this is what you're supposed to do for your group assignment. This is what, how you submit your assignment. You saw just now the folder I showed you. Okay, those are the things you submit. That is how you submit and this is what you're supposed to present. Is this clear? Okay, very good. Okay, I really hope that you'll do your best in your group assignment. Okay, I really hope you'll do your best because it's 50%. 20%, 20% okay, questionnaire. Questionnaire is group effort. If, if your questionnaire is 1 out of 20, everybody in the group will get 1 of 20. If you get 20 out of 20, all of you will get 20 out of 20. So if you have a member who's not contributing, you got to let us know from day one itself, from the beginning itself, not one day during the before the presentation or during the presentation or after the presentation, we won't be able to help. And all this must be reflected in your progress block sheet. Okay. If you have no questions, I'll take the attendance now. Okay. So guys, thank you very much for joining the lecture and for your patience. Okay. If you have any questions, you can ask in the tutorial. So in the tutorial, um, you should be practicing your questionnaire. Okay, you can start designing your questionnaire in the tutorial. So that's what we're going to do uh, next week. And like today, I've got a group. So that's what we're going to do. All right. If you have questions, you can ask. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Iman, thank you very much. We are done. All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Anu. Welcome. Bye, guys. Bye.
Hold on, yeah. Let me just pull out the attendance thing, yeah. Uh, hi, Miss. Yep. The the question, right? For the question A, you said total have to be thirty, right? Overall, overall. Overall. So yeah. is it include with the demographic profile also? Yeah, including the, demographic. You can go thirty, thirty-five. That's fine. Oh, so thirty to thirty-five are the questions. Yeah. yeah, because if it's a lot, people don't answer. That's the problem. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I need your help to identify which class do you belong to? Vera, which lecture, Vera? Which lecture? This one, right? Yeah. Okay, later we have tutorial, right? T14, right? Am I right? T14, isn't it? Is it T40? Yes, no? Anyone? No, can you all hear me? Yes, miss. Yeah, latest T14, right? Today? Yeah, we have which tutorial?